Welcome to lesson 7.1, Solving Linear Systems by Graphing. So first thing that we need to do is to make sense of what is or what are linear systems. So a linear system can refer to two or more linear equations that are in the same variables, meaning both contain x and y and so on. So in this case, two or more linear equations, that's all you really need to know for linear systems. So the goal of our lesson today, and you'll see in the next few lessons, we're going to use different ways to solve linear systems. Today is to use graphing to find the solution to a linear system. So the first thing that we need to do is to decide whether an ordered pair is a solution to the system of linear equations. So the way that we do that is if we have an ordered pair, our coordinates here, remember they're always written as x comma y, we need to check those by substituting them in for both equations. If both equations end up being true, then the ordered pair is a solution. If one of the equations is not true, or both are not true, then it is not a solution. So in order to be a solution, it needs to be true for both equations. So we're checking 2, 4, going to substitute it into the opposite of x plus y equals 2. So we're checking, does a negative 2 plus 4 equal 2? Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, so 2 equals 2. So yes, that equation's good. Now we need to check the second one. Put in the same values for x and y. So 2 for x, 4 for y. And we have 2 times 2 plus 4, checking if that equals 8. So is 4 plus 4 8? 8 equals 8, so that's also true. So 2 comma 4 is a solution. In B... We're using the coordinate negative 1, negative 4. So we're going to substitute the negative 1 for x, negative 4 for y. In our top equation, when we do that, 2 times negative 1 minus 3 times negative 4, we're checking if that equals 10. So does a negative 2 plus 12 equal 10? 10 equals 10, so yes it does. So now we check the other equation by substituting in the negative 1, negative 4. 4 times negative 1 plus 2 times negative 4, we're checking does that equal 12. So does the negative 4 plus a negative 8 equal 12? No, that's a negative 12, not a positive 12. So that equation is not true. So negative 1, negative 4 is not a solution to our linear system. So then in C and D, it's the same process. Substitute in the ordered pair for x and y. So checking it with the top equation, 3 times negative 1 plus a negative 2. Does that equal 6? That's a negative 3 plus negative 2, which is a negative 5. Negative 5 does not equal 6. So that negative 1, negative 2 is not a solution. If it didn't work for the first equation, I don't even need to check it for the second. And with D, substituting in a 2, negative 2 for x and y. So we would have negative 2 plus negative 2. We're checking, does that equal a negative 8? Negative 4 does not equal negative 8. So that ordered pair is not a solution. So the checking process, you just substitute in the ordered pair for x and y for both equations. Now, if you don't want to check all possible points, how do we actually take the two equations and find the solution? And that way, in this lesson that we're going to look at is graphing each linear system. So there's four steps to the graphing process. First, if your equation's not in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, I would write it in slope-intercept form or a form that's easy for you to graph. 
For example, if I already have y equals negative three, we know that's a horizontal line, no need to change that format. After you have your equations in slope-intercept form, you should graph both equations on the same coordinate plane. After you've graphed both equations on the same coordinate plane, the point where they intersect, so where it appears that they intersect, like this one, it appears that they check it or they cross at negative four comma two. So what I wanna do is take that point from the graph and check it algebraically by substituting the X and Y into both equations. So we're substituting it in just like we did in this top section. If it works for both equations, then we can confirm that it's a solution. So the graph gives us the solution. We use this final step to check it algebraically. So in this case, our blue line, y equals negative 5 fourths x minus 3. So my y-intercept is negative 3. So I'm going to start at a negative 3 right here. My slope is a negative 5 over 4. So that means down 5, right 4. Or because I ran out of graphing space, I could go up 5, left 4. There's my other point. Draw the blue line. Then my other equation I put in orange. y equals 3 fourths x plus 5. So y-intercept is a positive 5. So we start at 0, 5, positive 5 right here. And our slope is 3 fourths. So up 3, 1, 2, 3, right 4. If we run out of space again, you can go in reverse, down three, left four. So those two lines appear to intersect at negative four comma two. Now I'm going to take the negative four two, substitute it into both equations to check if it's an answer. So substituting in the two for y and the negative four for x, I end up with two equals two. So yes, it's a solution to the blue line. Then for my second equation, substituting in the 2 for y, negative 4 for x. So we're checking, does 2 equal 3 fourths times negative 4 plus 5? So does 2 equal a negative 3 plus 5? Yes, it does. So our solution is simply negative 4 comma 2. So if it just tells you to graph, you can just do the graphing. But if it tells you to check algebraically, you need to show your work to check for both equations once you have your point off the graph. So in B, y equals negative 3 and y equals negative 1 half x. So y equals negative 3, horizontal line at a negative 3. y equals negative 1 half x, so our y-intercept is 0. So 0, 0, slope is a negative 1 over 2, so down 1, right 2, and I can draw in my two lines. My two lines appear to cross at 6, negative 3, this point right here. So if I substitute in the 6, negative 3 for both equations, in the top one there is no x, so I just put the negative 3 in for y, and negative 3 equals negative 3, that's true. For our second equation, negative 3 for y, 6 for x, a negative 1 half times 6 is a negative 3. So it works for both equations, so 6 negative 3 is our solution. Then with c, x equals 4, vertical line at 4, y equals x minus 1. So our y-intercept is a negative 1, slope is 1, so up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. They appear to cross at 4, 3. So I'm going to check it for both. So an x equals 4, I just substitute the 4 for x. 4 equals 4, it is a solution. For the other equation, 3 goes in for y, 4 for x. Does 3 equal 4 minus 1? Yes, it does. So our solution is 4, 3. And then with D, our first equation, y equals negative 2x minus 3. So start at a negative 3, and our slope is a negative 2 over 1. So down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. 
or in reverse, up to left one. So the orange line is our first equation. Then the second line is this purple line right here. Negative two-fifths x plus five. So our y-intercept is a positive five. Slope is down two, right five. So it appears these two lines cross at a negative five, seven. Now when I substitute that in, checking the first equation, I end up with seven equals seven. So yes, that is a solution. Substituting it in negative five, seven into the second equation, we end up also with seven equals seven. So that's also a solution. So our solution to this whole equation or system is negative five comma seven, that ordered pair. And now example three here, we're not gonna go through the whole sheet. I just picked three off of here. So A, D, and E, if you wanna try B, C, and F, feel free, and then I can always help walk you through them. But with these, these are not in slope-intercept form. So we want to solve for y to get these into y equals mx plus b. So the orange equation, we need to get y alone. So I'd start with subtracting 3x from each side. I have a negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 4. Divide everything by a negative 4. And my equation is y equals 3 fourths x minus 1. So y-intercept at a negative 1, slope of up 3, right 4. For my second equation, x plus 2y equals 8. Subtract x from each side and divide by 2. So y would equal a negative 1 half x plus 4. So starting at a positive 4, and slope is down 1, right 2. Down one, right two. So it appears these two lines cross at four comma two. So I'm going to check four two in each equation. Now when you check the solution in each equation, if you rearrange the equation, it does not matter if I would check this solution in my y equals mx plus b or the original equation you can substitute it in for either. So in this case, I use the y equals mx plus b. So a two went in for y, a four went in for x. So does two equal three fourths of four minus one? So does two equal three minus one? Yes, it does. Then check it in our other equation. So y equals negative one half x plus four, two in for y, four in for x. So does two equal a negative one half times four plus four? So does two equal a negative two plus four? Yes, it does. So four comma two is our solution to the system of equations. In D, we need to rearrange our equations into y equals mx plus b. So on top, I'm just subtracting the three x. So I have y equals negative three x minus six. That would be our orange line here. Then in the second equation, we need to add x to each side and divide by negative two. So we'd have y equals a negative one half x plus three halves. Now, even though this is a fraction, we can still graph it. So for the blue line, I'd be up 1.5, which is three over two. Then my slope is down one, right two, or in reverse, up one, left two, up one, left two. It appears, and this is why the checking is so important with the fraction ones, it appears that our two lines cross at negative three comma three. So I need to check that with both equations. So in this case, I substituted negative three, three into my original equation and I end up with negative six equals negative six, so it's a solution. Then to check it for our second equation, putting in the negative three, three for x and y, we end up with three minus two times three, checking if that equals negative three. So does three minus six equal a negative three? Yes, it does. So our solution is negative three comma three. And our last example here for the graphing would be E. So again, we want to get both equations in y equals mx plus b. 
So our top one, when we add 3x, we'd end up with y equals 3x minus 7. The orange line here, starting at a negative 7, going up 3, right 1. For our bottom equation, we need to subtract the 2x and then divide everything by 2. So that would be y equals a negative x plus 5. So positive 5 for the y-intercept, slope of a negative 1, so down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1. Draw in that line, and they appear to cross at 3, 2. So we're going to check 3, 2 for each equation, substituting in the 3 for x and the 2 for y, comes out true for our first equation and true for our second equation. So the solution to our linear system is three comma two, that ordered pair. So what you wanna keep in mind with this lesson is with the graphing, these four steps work every time. If they tell you to check algebraically, in the practice problems, you need to show that work of checking it algebraically. If you're just checking if something's a solution, you're just substituting in the x and y for both equations. So again, our first lesson looks at the graphing approach. We're going to look at a couple other approaches to linear systems in our next lessons.